Katie Huffaker. Here. Todd Kesterson. Here. Steve Douglas. Here. David Goff. Here. Randy Baxley. Here. Rita Music. Here. Johnny Taylor. Here. John McGraw. Here. Russell Turner. Here. Tim Seals. Here. Sammy Solomon. Robert Blevins. Here, sir. Gene Esslinger. Here. Randy Bales. Here. John Neil Scarlett. Here. Terry Dockery. Here. Robert Tucker. Here. Jimmy Carmichael. Here. David Seal. <coughs> Here. Bob Beeler. Here. Barbara Sheets. Here. Would everyone please stand for the prayer led by Commissioner Chaplain Donnie Tabor and remain standing for the pledge. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to serve you, Lord Jesus. We pray that we can do this in such a way that will bring you honor and bring you glory. And dear Heavenly Father, everything that we do and say will be about you and for the prosperity of the people of Jefferson County, Father. Help us to listen with your ears, Father, and see with your eyes that we that we may do your will. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I see we have a full house, so let's try to keep the chitter chatter down so everybody can hear what's going on. Next on the agenda, we have a nomination and election of county commission officers. First on the agenda is the chair. The floor is now open for nominations. Mr. David Seal. I nominate Mr. Carmichael for chairman. Anyone else? Nominate Robert Tucker. We have a nomination of Robert Tucker. Anyone else? Is there a motion to close nominations? So move. Second. We will call the roll and you will say Tucker or Carmichael, which one you prefer. Mr. Clerk, when you're ready. Katie Huffaker. Carmichael. Todd Casterson. Tucker. Steve Douglas. Carmichael. David Goff. Tucker. Randy Baxley. Tucker. Rita Music. Tucker. Donnie Tabor. Tucker. John McGraw. Carmichael. Russell Turner. Carmichael. Tim Seals. Tucker. Sammy Solomon. Robert Levins. Tucker. Gene Esslinger. Tucker. Randy Bales. Carmichael. John Neil Scarlett. Carmichael. Terry Dockery. Carmichael. Robert Tucker. Tucker. Jimmy Carmichael. Carmichael. David Seal. Carmichael. Bob Beeler. Tucker. Barbara Sheets. Tucker. Mr. Tucker, would you assume the duties of the chair? <laughs> I want to let you all know that I'm I'm honored for the privilege to serve as your chair, and I appreciate the vote of confidence that you've placed in me. Um, and regardless of, of who you voted for for chair, I hope that all 21 of us can come together and work together over this next year as efficiently and as effectively as possible for the betterment of the citizens of Jefferson County. Next is the election of chair pro temp. The floor is open. Mr. Blevins. Todd Kesterson. Kesterson. Any other nominations? Move that nomination seat. Todd Kesterson is the chair pro temp by acclamation. Next is parliamentarian. The floor is open. Ms. Huffaker. John Neal Scarlett. Are there any other nominations? David Gough. 
Are there any other nominations? The floor is closed. I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll. You'll be voting for Commissioner Scarlett or Commissioner Gallant. Mr. Clerk. Katie Huffaker. Scarlett. Todd Kester. Gallant. Steve Douglas. Scarlett. David Gallant. Gallant. Randy Baxley. Gallant. Rita Music. Gallant. Donnie Tabor. Gallant. John McGraw. Scarlett. Russell Turner. Gallant. Tim Seals. Go. Robert Blevins. Go. Gene Esslinger. Go. Randy Bales. John Neal. Scarlet. John Neal Scarlet. Scarlet. Terry Dockery. Scarlet. Robert Tucker. Go. Jimmy Carmichael. Scarlet. <coughs> David Seal. Scarlet. Bob Beeler. Go. Barbara Sheets. Go. Go. Go has it eight to twelve. Next, the floor is open for nominations for chaplain. Donnie Tabor. Are there any other nominations? Jimmy Carmichael. John McGraw. Are there any other nominations? Floor is closed. You'll be voting on uh, Commissioner Tabor or Commissioner McGraw for chaplain, and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Katie Huffaker. McGraw. Todd Kesterson. Tabor. <coughs> Steve Douglas. McGraw. David Gall. Tabor. Randy Baxley. Tabor. Radio Music. Tabor. Donnie Tabor. McGraw. John McGraw. Tabor. Russell Turner. McGraw. Tim Seals. Tabor. Robert Blevins. Donnie Tabor. Gene Esslinger. McGraw. Randy Bales. McGraw. John Neal Scarlett. McGraw. Terry Dockery. Tabor. Robert Tucker. Tabor. Jimmy Carmichael. McGraw. David Seal. McGraw. Bob Beeler. Tabor. Barbara Sheets. McGraw. That's a 10 to 10 tie. Both of you two Mr. McGraw. I'd like to uh, withdraw and ask by acclamation that Donnie Tabor be the chat. Accepted. Uh, Donnie, if you're willing to serve, I appreciate your service. Okay, next, we have approval and correction of the agenda. Is there any? Okay, you'll, you'll take note that there's been an informational report added from the rescue squad. Next, I'll entertain a, a motion to approve the minutes from the regular session and the beer board. Motion by McGraw. Second. Second by Seals. Opposed? Motion carries. And next, we have an appearance of citizens. And I am going to do my best to announce these names. I guess in the, in the future, if you're a citizen and would like to speak when you turn these in, please let's... Let's meet for two seconds and let me get your name right because this is not going to be the easiest. But, but I'm going to try and I'll apologize up front for missing them. First is Matthew Bobbick. And sir, when you step to the podium, if, if each of you would state your name, where, you're, where you live, and if you're representing a group, yourself, or a business. Okay. Uh, my name is Matthew Bobick. We've uh, met before. Uh, I am from the Parrots Chapel community on the south side of Douglas Lake, and, and I am speaking on, on behalf of that group. Um, and, and I guess if I may, if anyone from Parrots Chapel, if you can just raise your hand to show the, okay. So our community is, is here as a group. 
um, today. So I just wanted to, to take this opportunity to clarify and follow up on a couple things from last week's meeting. I think there was some good dialogue that, that we were able to have last week. Uh, and one of the things that was, that, that was raised was, uh, you know, when we live in a rural area, uh, the, it, living in rural America means, you know, things like bus rides can take longer. Certain services can take, can take longer for us to receive. And uh, that's just kind of a way of life when, when you are in rural, rural America. And I don't think anybody in our community is, is here to dispute that or trying to dispute that. Uh, I personally, I, I've lived in rural America my entire life. I, I grew up on a 50-acre farm in, in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. Um, and actually, as a child, I was, the f I was the first child on the bus in the morning on the way to elementary school. I was the last child off. Uh, on, on the way home. I, I know what that experience is like and it's one of the reasons that that issue is near and dear to my heart when, when I come to speak to you. Um, it was 45 minutes, it wasn't an hour, it wasn't an hour and a half, but I can promise you it felt like an eternity. And um, you know, the difference for me in that situation was that 45, minutes bu 45 minute bus ride took me to the closest school available to me. And, and the issue that, that, that we have is that in order to get to these Jefferson County schools, our kids have to pass by other schools that are much closer to them along the way, New Center Elementary School, Sevier County High School, and so on. Um, so I know it's been raised here that Jefferson County can't block our kids from going to Sevier County schools, but Sevier County isn't required to take them. And at this point, from all the discussions that we've had with them, they won't. And they have good reason for that. If they let our kids in, they open themselves up to potentially having to let everybody in. And that's just something that they're not willing to do at this point in time. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Um, another comment just th that was made last week, and I think it was kind of made tongue in cheek, but I just wanted to address it because I think it's an important one. Uh, there was a comment made last week that you know, we must not have a problem with the constables or the police officers from, from Jefferson County because you know, we hadn't mentioned them or, or, or made any complaints. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone here knows that, that I personally, I don't think we as a community uh, have any problems with the police officers, the ambulance drivers, the teachers, the road workers, the quality of schools in Jefferson County. It's not about the individuals that serve in those positions in any way, shape, or form. I have great respect for all of them, and I sincerely hope that none of them take any of this as a personal attack to them, because it is, is not. Okay. Um, last note, the, some of you asked about us, we had talked to Sevier County. Um, Mike Chambers, who is a Sevier County Commissioner, I spoke to him between you know, last Monday and, and today, and he said that if any of you want to speak to him about Sevier County's interest in our area, he'd be happy to, to speak to you at any time. I have his contact information. Just seek me out, and I'll give it to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Bobert. And you know, I, I appreciate everybody coming out from Parrots Chapel to share your, your thoughts. And um, I would invite any of you that are standing along the back to uh, feel free to sit in the jury section. Seats are soft and, and make your way there if you'd like to see it. You're more than welcome to stand, but feel welcome there too. Um, one other thing that I'm going to ask is to, uh, we, I think government works best when citizens are informed and involved. And so I'm excited that you all are here. However, to expedite things, if you're going to say something that has been stated by somebody else, that repetition you can just say I was going to say what he said and, and just save that part if you have something new to add please do okay the next person is Steve McSmith good evening my name is Steve McSmith my wife and I live at 3766 Island View Road our address is Sevierville Tennessee 37876 your faces are looking increasingly familiar to me, and I hope uh, in reverse mine is beginning to look a little bit familiar to you. Uh, I spoke to you at last week's workshop meeting, and if you recall, as Matt just stated, there was substantial conversation at that meeting between several of you and Matt, who is our point man for the Paris Chapel community. Mayor Alan Palmieri weighed in on the subject and offered to meet with representatives of our group in an attempt to provide pertinent information to assist in weighing the cost of county services to our area 
against the loss of tax revenue should we become part of Sevier County, due in part to Mayor Palmieri and other Jefferson County officials' busy schedules, this of course will take some time. We will be diligent in our participation in the fact-finding process. We will make every effort to accomplish this task in as little time as is reasonable, efficient, and thorough. We're thankful for the interest exhibited by those of you who have asked questions and acknowledge that we are serious in our intent and united in our effort. Our thanks go to Mayor Palmieri and each county official who will be involved in ferreting out the info needed for an accurate appraisal of what will be ultimately an asset or a liability for Jefferson County. We appreciate your earnest involvement as representatives of all citizens of Jefferson County and we will encourage your patience to see the process through to the achievement of an accurate, honest summary of the facts. We believe that in the final analysis, the facts will support our contention that changing the county boundary and ceding the 37876 Sevierville zip code area of Jefferson County to Sevier County is the right thing to do. Thank you again for listening. Thank you, sir. Next is Tina Bowick. Hey, um, one, thing I, one thing I don't want to do, and I understand all of you from the same community, and all of you in your hearts are applauding every time, but just as an order of decorum, please don't applaud and please don't boo. I'd have to call you out of order and I don't want to do that. Okay? Thank you. Ms. Bobick. Hello. My name is Tina Bobick and I live in the Parrots Chapel community. Uh, last week, some of you asked our community to gather information in order for you to be able to make an informed decision about whether or not to allow our area to pursue a move to Sevier County. That's a fair request, but I also have a request for the Commission in return. I understand that many of you have never been over to our area of Jefferson County. It's so separated from the rest of the county that many of you have never even had reason to go over there. But if you've never been to our community, how can you make an educated, fair decision about our future? I'm afraid that some of you on the Commission aren't treating our situation with the importance it deserves. <clears throat> the letters and emails we've sent you are evidence of that. Certainly not all, but some of you either copy and paste the same response to everybody or you just don't take time to respond at all. The phone calls we've made to some of you go unanswered and the request to come out to visit us at our latest community gathering were ignored by most. It's easy to brush our issues off when you're not the one dealing with them every day. So here's an offer that I'm willing to make to get you more involved in this community. To any of you that are willing, I will put you up in my home for a week or even a few, or even a few days. You can experience what it's like to drive into Jefferson County every day, just like our kids have to do for school. I invite you to drive all the way out to the end of Parrish Chapel Road, out to the end of Buckhorn Road, and then take a drive out to um, Hobart Cemetery Road and tell me you would, you would feel comfortable having your family drive those roads on a daily basis. While you're there, you can sit down on the ki at the kitchen table with people like Eva Lawson from Fair Garden Circle and let her tell you her story and maybe meet with Charles Flemings who lives in, uh, in our community for a little over three decades. And then I want you to drive all the way out to 948 Pleasure Road, where two children spent all of last school year on the bus for two hours, one way. Drive to the high school from their home, remembering that those kids have to do it twice a day on a school bus. I've gotten to know my community. We're not only growing in number, but in friendship. There are many age ranges out there, not just rich, elderly people, like I'm afraid some of you envision. We are a community of good, hardworking people. We're not here to stir up trouble or go to battle with this commission. We're here because there are serious problems in our community that you have the power to impact. And the easiest way for you to help is to allow this community to go to a county that is better positioned to provide solutions. In closing, as the Bible teaches us in Proverbs 327, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it's within your power to act. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dockery. Uh, 
I would personally be more than willing to take any commissioner on a tour if they're not familiar with the area because as you know there's Fair Garden Circles, Parish Chapel, there's Gators mm -hmm. Point, but there's this thing called the Sunshine Law that uh, makes me not want to do that and be in violation of commissioners meeting together. Anyway, be and come and stay in the house, stay at my house. Well, they're not allowed to if, do that. If a commissioner, I can't make them a pie and get on their good shot, good side. <laughs> you can. I what kind of pie? <laughs> if if one of them wanted to take, there's a lot of older ones, maybe pecan pie. <laughs> If one of them just wanted to take a tour and see all the different areas, could we find some, a tour guide yeah, that would show? Yeah, I'd be glad to do it any day and every day. So I could do if, it. If any of y'all do, I know every know. pothole, I can dodge them. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Dockery. Uh, Mr. Beeler? Ma'am, I'm not trying to discredit you or anything, but mm -hmm. you, you made a statement. Either I misunderstood you mm -hmm. or something's wrong when you said it took two hours one way. Yeah. One hour and 50 minutes to be exact. Hour and what? One hour and 50 minutes. 50 or 15? Five zero. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. I don't, I don't have a question. I just wanted to make a comment that the school system did um, add two new bus routes to the area. And so I was told that the average now on the bus for those kids is an hour. Yeah, it's so an hour and 15 minutes. An hour and five zero? An hour and one five. <laughs> now. Now, with the, now with the new bus. That was like, last year it was an that hour. That was last year they had to ride the bus for one full year. Well, she just told me it's one five old. Last year last they year. added two new bus routes oh, okay. this year. Well, they they they've taken Ms. 30 Ms. minutes off their ride from a new bus, but Ms. it's Ms. still Ms. well over an hour. Uh, <laughs> were you all aware of how long it would take your children to go to school when you bought this property? No, ma'am. It's not like it's been there. It's not like it just fixed yesterday. That's a good question. That's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up. I buy a house. I know what I'm buying, and when my child was little, I knew how long he had to be and on the bus. And, and, and I am grateful that you know that, but there are several people in this community, m more than several, that were misled. Our, our area is Sevier County. I mean, our area, is, our address is Sevierville. Our electric was Sevier County. All the schools on the, on the listing were Sevier County schools. If you put in one of our addresses, you're gonna find a listing of Sevier County schools. Knew I knew that when I closed at the title company it said Jefferson County. And then when I um, tried to get my kid, I enrolled my kid in school and they told me he can't go there in a Sevier County school. Mr. Unaware Dockery, of that. I just want to make a quick comment to that, to, the, to maybe the point at hand. Several years ago, we had portable school, portables at several schools in Jefferson County. We had portables at the high school, White Pine School, Danridge Elementary, Jefferson Elementary. Um, and the same kind of logic would say that if parents moved to this county and they knew those portals <clears throat> were there, then they should be acceptable. But that's not the case. We spent millions of dollars at all these schools eliminating portables. Uh, and I think we can do improvements to the Parish Chapel area if they stay in Jefferson County. Miss Music. My son teaches in a portable at White Pine, and we're the only school in the county with portables. Mm -hmm. And my son has taught in a portable since he's been teaching in Jefferson County. So the, it's just not one school, Miss Bobick, thank the, you for your time. Okay. I, want to, I want to let Charles Go Fleming ahead. talk. Mr. Fleming. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, for your time tonight and, and commissioners. Uh, my name is Charles Fleming. I live at uh, 1264 Flat Creek. Uh, in a community that separated from Parrot's Chapel, but uh, a little more isolated on that end of the road. But I've been thinking, I attended uh, the meeting at the firehouse at Parrot's Chapel, and, and uh, uh, I've had work done by a clean lot here that Terry and I tried to get through uh, for that 
the lots was real bad in that area with garbage, and he probably still has pictures of it. But in, in thinking this, I've got about five points I'd like to bring up for you to think about. Uh, I bought my property in 1987. I built there in 96 and have had services out of Sevierville all those years. And whenever I purchased my property, I was told by the real estate that all services comes out of Severe. And getting to checking into it, I would be willing to say since this lake was formed in, in 42, that Sevierville has given that area <coughs> services all those years. I'm talking about police, garbage, and, and uh, EM uh, emergency, and stuff like that. But the points, number one point I like to bring out, I attended the Sevier County uh, meeting with Matt, and I listened to Larry Walters make a statement whenever Matt brought it up, that he would not get involved in this issue until Jefferson County commissioners okayed them to do it. I mean, he won't get involved anywhere at all uh, until it goes through you. Uh, and number two, after hearing this meeting that that area only produces 4% of taxes collected in Jefferson County, that's not many taxes. Come to about 900,000, I believe we estimate. You know, maybe Sevier County couldn't take those services over for that, even though they're set up, you know, in Covina, new center, they're building a new firehouse at the school. Maybe they wouldn't even want to take it over for 900000 So that's something for us to think about. The other thing, I sold some property to be for Douglas Lake Resort to be built on. And we're all familiar with that, but the First Tennessee Bank finally it went in bankruptcy in, in 05. Finally, they straightened it out, and just two or three years ago, whenever it was straightened out, they advertised most of that property online. And most of that property was sold by people that is either retiring, and some permanent residents has retired, and, and uh, uh, I think that area over there is mostly older people. And looking in here, I think, most retired people is living in Paris Chapel. I'm not familiar with Paris Chapel too much. But, you know, we got to look at whenever you get old, you, you need uh, fire services, you need ambulance, and you need uh, uh, garbage more than you need anything else about it. Now, number four, if you look at most of the lots in our area over there, particularly the lake lots, there's four to five acre lot, and you're putting three or four acres Mr. under. Mr. Fleming, it's it's been three and a half minutes now. Is it? You can wind it up in the next okay. ten seconds or so. Uh, so so it, you're only uh, paying big dollars for one uh, acre of land to build on, and as I understand it, by an old, old uh, gentleman, about 80 years old, part of his uh, farm is in uh, Jefferson County and parts in Sevier County. That this lake, whenever it was made, is leased to the government for 99 years, and in 20 years, that's up. Now, it's, it, I know the, the people, property owners is not going to want to pay taxes on that lake bottom anymore. They can't use nothing below 1007, so that's going to cut down on some of the taxes. So that's just a few things I'd like for the commissioner to study on and think about. Thank you, Mr. Fleming. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Scarlett. Just a point of information. Lake bottoms were not on tax rolls in 1990. The Tennessee Comptroller or Department of Revenue came into Jefferson County and said you got to put them on. The deal that was made was every time it's changed hands, we'll put them on. There's still property that's not on because the title searches themselves would be cost prohibitive. <laughs> but the only property that's on is the ones that's changed hands. And the old deeds all call to the middle of the river. Is that yes? I yes. can tell you that because yes. we researched it. Because I know mine did. 
So All right, we're, next we're not on the line. We have uh, <laughs> Missy Graves. Hello, I'm Missy Graves. I live at 713 Pleasure Road, and I'm here to represent the uh, Gator Point side as well as the Parrots Chapel side. And I would like to ask that you consider um, this proposal that we're uh, doing for rezoning. Like the lady that spoke about at the school, um, when I bought my property 11 years ago, I was informed that it was Sevier County Services, uh, Sevier County Electric, everything else. My children went to Sevier County Schools and graduated from Sevier County Schools for the 10 years that I lived there. No one ever said they have to go to Jeff County. I mean, I just found that out today. And I didn't know that because in every, all my paperwork, it's Sevier County. Um, but I'm neighbors to the two children that ride the bus and I pass them in the morning at 10 till six and I just hate that they're out that early having to go to school. But like he said, our, our, our area from Gator Point down to my house, and I'm at the end of the road, is a fairly aging population. Um, I'm not a spring chicken, but I'm the youngest one for two miles. And my closest neighbors are in their 80s. I have others that are in their 70s. And my concern is the EMS service that we have in our area. Um, I'm in the medical profession and I own and operate a, a practice in Sevierville and I've worked ER and trauma for years and the golden rule or the golden hour in medicine is that the sooner that you can get someone heart attack, stroke or a trauma to a facility within an hour increases their chances of survival significantly. So if you're over that hour um, chances of mortality is significantly improved or um, decreased and the chance of disability from that injury is very high so with our EMS being dispatched from Jeff County 45 minutes you've wasted 45 minutes of your hour and of course in Sevier County it's going to take time to get there as well but anything that we can do to cut down on the delivery time of that person getting to the proper services that they need is crucial. Um, there are medications that can be administered if someone's having a stroke or heart attack, but there's a window of opportunity to give those. And if you're outside of that opportunity, it's gone. So I would like for you to consider that um, in your decision making for this. Thank because you. I don't think you can put a price on a life. Thank you. Thank you. And next is Stanley Kalisak. That close? Perfect. My name is Stan Kalizak. I reside at <coughs> excuse me, 2935 Chapel View Court, Sevierville, 37876, and I'm speaking as an individual from the Parish Chapel community. A lot of what I wanted to say was already stated, but I do want to add the following. I personally do only three things in Jefferson County, and I wouldn't do any of these if I were able to perform them in Sevier County. I pay my property taxes, register my vehicles, and vote. I do nothing additionally to contribute to the <coughs> revenue of Jefferson County. It's not that I dislike the county or anything of that sort. For me, it's just a matter of convenience. I buy my groceries, my gas, pay for entertainment, dine at restaurants, seek recreation, and purchase virtually all other necessary items in Sevier County. And not a cent benefits Jefferson County. I work for Sevier County, <coughs> attend church in Sevier County, visit my primary care provider in Sevier County, have my taxes filed through a CPA in Sevier County, and the list goes on. It's just convenient for me to do so and I seriously doubt that this will ever change. I would venture a guess that I am not the only one from the Parrish Chapel community who does likewise. I'd be interested to know how much revenue Jefferson County is forfeiting on a yearly basis to Sevier County or other surrounding counties because of residents like me. 
does Jefferson County even care? My point is this. I am all but in name a Sevier County resident. The animosity and frustration I am experiencing is due to the fact that I feel alienated from Jefferson County solely because of where I reside within it. In my opinion, Sevier County provides me more than the county of which I'm legally a resident. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Next is Catherine Noe. Thank you. I'm Catherine Noyes. I live in the 10th District. Bob Beeler and Barbara Sheets are my representatives, have been for some time. And um, I'm here tonight because I have you all in one room. <laughs> uh, there was a question after the last meeting, after the last time I spoke, and someone asked me what my role is in Humane Society. So um, if you'll give me a few minutes, I'll try to explain it to you. Um, I was originally one of the co-founders, and I served on the board of the Humane Society from 1978 to 1998, or 2000, or in and out. And then I took about a 15 or 14 year vacation from Humane Society. Not that I didn't support them financially or uh, in heart and spirit, but I was not on the ground. Um, then I was asked, to serve on the Animal Control Oversight Committee as an at-large member. And I asked what that was, and when I found out what it was, I thought maybe I can make a contribution and maybe we can make this program better. Um, so I said yes. We have two county commissioners, John McGraw and Randy Bales. They're voting members of the Animal Control Oversight Committee. We have two Humane Society board members, uh, President Scott Lubis and Secretary Shirley Hammond. They are voting members. And then there is Catherine Noyes, who is an at-large citizen representative who gets to vote. Mayor Paul Mary is a member, but not a voting member. Sheriff uh, Bud McCoy is a member, but not a voting member. I hope I haven't left anyone out. Um, while I have this opportunity, um, I gave you all my phone number, hoping for suggestions and ideas um, to make the program better. My goal in serving on this committee is I want Humane Society to be a partner with you, not an adversary. And I believe that the whole idea of animal control is um, comes under public health. Now the fact that Humane Society is willing and able as a 501c3 to raise money to do rescue and do the humane things that we like to do, that is not your money that is being spent. That is the money that we raise to do those humane activities, to find foster families, to find homes. So don't think, wrap it up. Okay, my phone number, 865-475-9309. If you have any ideas, call me. I wanna talk to you, thank you. And thank you, um, John McGraw, and thank you, Randy Bales, for this wonderful resolution for Chris Spencer, our shelter manager, who I'm very proud of, and I'm here for tonight. Thank you. Next is Hal or Miller. All right. Next item on the agenda. Like yes, sir. I'd like to ask the point man to come back up there that you all got. Uh, Mr. Bobick, I think. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd, I'd like for you all to help me out here. I'm going to have to go and explain to the people in my district, and I live in Jefferson City. Okay. And I would like for you to pick someone out to write me a letter explaining how am I going to explain to the widow women of my district 
and there's a lot of them mm -hmm. that's up in age, they're on fixed income, some of them has never had a driver's license. They've never, they're from the old school, you know, they, they uh, raise families and take care of the house and all that. They never had a job, mm -hmm. so you can imagine what they draw. Certainly. How am I going to explain to them? I, this is what I want from you to help. Tell me how I can explain to them that their taxes is going to go up to pay for, for you all over in another. I'm sure they're going to feel sorry for you, but I don't see how they're going to be able to pay for this. They're, okay, I have, a, I have a couple thoughts on it. Um, number one, I... Well, you just, just write me a letter. Okay. Because I'm, I'm going to need it to show it to them. Okay. Thank right, you, Mr. Bober. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Beeler. So next, I'm going to turn that over to uh, Commissioner McGraw and Bales. What a privilege, Mr. Chairman, can we have uh, Scott Lubis, who is the president of the Humane Society Standards? Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, you're going to read the resolution, my friend. And first of all, let me just say, Chris, would you come up? Thank you, Shirley. Sure. Uh, Christina Spencer is a very, very valuable member of our community. Of the service that is provided by the Animal Control Oversight Board. Not only does she come to work every day, much of time clock to stay long past after her hours, but she has not got one or two, but five certifications, mostly on her own, because she knows how important humane treatment of animals, protection of our citizens is for our county. And that in and of itself makes any employee a valuable person in realizing that there are very, very few people that have the skills and the certification that she has makes it even more important. She is now enrolled in a program for animal shelter management and she's done most of this on her own because she's the kind of citizen that we need Jefferson County to help all of us to fulfill the mission of protection of our citizens. So Chris, Commissioner Bales and I are giving you this tonight because we really believe in the work you've done and the initiative that you've shown and the service that you have given to the citizens of Jefferson County. And Mr. Herndon, I appreciate you reading it. Resolution 2017-47, a resolution to honor Christina J. Spencer. Whereas Christina J. Spencer has served with dist distinction the citizens of Jefferson County for the past four years as the animal shelter manager, having served as kennel tech and assistant shelter manager for a total of seven years. And whereas Ms. Spencer is a lifelong advocate for animals and the humane treatment of them through the obtaining of professional skills and training for her job. And whereas Ms. Spencer has developed skills in vaccination, basic health assessment of companion animals, heartworm testing, parvo testing, and age determination. And whereas Ms. Spencer has successfully taken courses and obtained certification in animal euthanasia and all three levels of animal cruelty investigation, reaching the expert level in October 2015. And whereas Ms. Spencer continues to improve her skills as a student at the University of the Pacific in animal shelter management. And whereas Ms. Spencer has demonstrated 13 total years of work with East Tennessee Animal Shelters, serving as the Eastern Regional Director of the Animal Care and Control Association of Tennessee. Now therefore be it resolved by the Jefferson County Commission convened this 18th day of September 2017 that we publicly declare to Christina J. Spencer our gratitude and appreciation for the faithful service to the citizens of Jefferson County as animal shelter manager with a legacy of continued education and certifications enabling her to perform duties with increasing skills efficiency. Thank you. Now we'll turn the meeting over to uh, Commissioner Kesterson, the chair of the nominating committee.
No. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Carmichael. Um, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve notaries and bonds. No move. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Seal and Seals and uh, music second. Now I'll turn it over to Chairman of Nominating Committee, Commissioner Kesterson. Um, we have about eight committees and boards that we want to bring some nominations. Uh, the first item would be the Clinch River Regional Library Board. Um, we bring you Jack Kramer, and that's a contingent upon their meeting that will be held September the 21st. I'll ask the clerk. Oh, wait a minute. If there's no, um, is that the only one? That is the only bringing? one. Are yes. there any of the nominations from the floor for the Clinch River Regional Library Board? We're going to approve that by acclamation. Number two. Uh, the next one is Jefferson County Animal Control Oversight Board. Uh, we're bringing you Commissioner John McGraw and member Shirley Hammond for reappointment. Commissioner McGraw and, and Ms. Hammond, are there any nominations from the floor for Jefferson County Animal Control Oversight Board? We'll take that one also by acclamation. Number three will be Jefferson County Board of Health. We're bringing you Dr. Regina Fields for reappointment. Nominations from the floor. Accepted by acclamation. Number four. Jefferson County Building Inspection Board of Appeals. Bringing you Commissioner Jimmy Carmichael, Realtor Ed Franklin, and Citizen Mr. Randall Mitchell. All three are for reappointment. Nominations from the floor. Accepted by acclamation. Number five. Jefferson County Conservation Board. We're bringing you Commissioner Steve Douglas and Mr. David Swan for reappointment. Nominations from the floor. Accepted by acclamation. On number six, I was nominated for the Finance Committee. I'm going to withdraw my name and in its place, I would like to nominate from the floor Rita Music along with the committee's recommendation. For the Jefferson County Finance Committee, uh, we'll give you John McGraw, David Seal, Katie Huffaker, and Rita Music for reappointment. Nominations from the floor. Accepted by acclamation. Number seven. The Jefferson County Industrial Board uh, has one vacancy. Uh, Jeff DePew <coughs> is who we're bringing. Nominations from the floor. Accepted by acclamation. Number eight. Jefferson County Library Board of Trustees. Joe Malgeri, Michelle Templin, Samantha Reed, and Betty Kazarin. These are one for reappointment and the other three are appointments recommended by the Jefferson County Library Board. Nominations from the floor. Approved by acclamation. Next we'll have uh, reports from elected officials. And Mr. Mayor, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had not intended to speak tonight, but after Monday night, I felt like there were a few things, questions raised, and a few things that need to be cleared, cleared up. First, concerning the road in the Jefferson County Morristown Progressive Industrial Park. Just so that there's some clarity on this issue, there were two grants that were applied for, one from TBA for $450,000, and another one from the state of Tennessee for $535,000. That's a total of $985,000, almost a million dollar grant for a road. Marstown paid the match, Marstown City, of $400,000. Jefferson County hadn't paid anything for it, and yet almost half of the road is going to be improving Jefferson County property. Uh, that improvement does not cost us a penny. Number two, uh, the move was approved by Jefferson County Board of Highway Commissioners. 
which are individual elected commissioners in the county of Jefferson County. And then our own road superintendent, Mr. Tipton, has improved it. Now I know last Monday night it was somewhat embarrassing because there's an individual here that was with an engineering firm that's paid for by Marstown City. He was not here to give a presentation. He was here for an observance of what takes place and what went on. And yet there were some questions raised on this side and he tried to clear them up and then he had some cat calls on this side saying he needed to get up and make a presentation. He wasn't here for that purpose. Uh, I think it was somewhat embarrassing. Uh, it was also stated during that meeting that uh, no one from Jefferson County had talked or worked with Marstown or Hamblin County. Well, that's not a factual statement by any stretch of the, uh, the imagination. I know on several occasions, Mr. Tipton, Mr. Helton and I met with the mayor of Hamlin County, the mayor of Morristown City, Chamber of Commerce, and their economic development people. That uh, relationship that we've established there is not something that just happens once or twice. It's an ongoing process. Uh, so we do meet with representatives from Hamlin County and Morristown. At the same time, I believe it was at the uh, budget work session, Budget Chair Commissioner Scarlett made the statement that the Budget Committee should consider putting some money back or aside because we're getting labeled, Jefferson County is being labeled as anti-economic development. Just very quickly, let me say this. There's a reason that we have that label. If you'll go back and remember at one time, DTR wanted to locate in Jefferson County over close to White Pine. We ran them out. It wasn't just that they left, but we almost completely ran them out. They moved to Claiborne County. They just finished an expansion on their factory, and now they're employing right out a thousand employees that we could have had in Jefferson County. Some commissioners and others have given speeches and written articles accusing IDB, the Chamber, and EDOC of not being transparent in what's going on. Well, there's been a lawsuit that was uh, uh, filed. The chairman, the county commissioner, and our finance director sit on the EDOC committee. I mean, that's pretty broad transparency when you think who's serving on that. Part of the economic development that the chamber did has had to be cut back because of the reduction in funds. Some say that it wasn't a cut in funds to, to the chamber, but they're receiving less this year than they were last year. So it's a reduction or it's a cut. Love's Travel Center, uh, they got involved in a lawsuit over the sign. They were gonna locate on the interstate. So they packed up and they moved on. Rusty Wallace, thank God for Rusty Wallace moving into the county. Up until that time when they came in, that parcel of property was only paying $5,900 a year in taxes. And now it's gonna be reaping Jefferson County thousands of dollars in taxes. But yet, it passed on a split vote by county commission. There was a representative of IHOP that happened to come into a county commission meeting. And when he left, he said, I was considering bringing an IHOP in Jefferson County, but I don't think I'll do that. That's why we've got labeled as anti-economic development because we have actually been anti-economic development. When West Hamlin County completes their growth project coming towards Jefferson County and Sevier County continues theirs, our finance director has already told us about what's happening to our sales tax. Uh, they're gonna eat our lunch. Now concerning the plight of the residents of uh, Parrish Chapel, let me just say this, when I left the room, I knew that, uh, or heard that Commissioner Turner told the finance director that he wanted me to take the lead on the project that we were working on to gather some information. Well, there are two employees that report to county commission. That's the wheel tax officer and the veterans officer. Outside of that, the finance director reports to the finance committee and then county commission. The other employees report to elected officials or the mayor's office. Just for the record, we're not interested in playing games or adversarial roles with this county commission and the Parrish Chapel residents. Uh, 
if, if games and adversarial actions are going to be taken, then we'll, we'll play that if that's what it's going to take. But the mayor's office doesn't work for county commission, does not report to county commission. I work with you just like I have with Mr. Dockery when he asked about the ambulance and fire. Uh, we're working with him on that, and I'll work with you on it. But we're not going to be dictated to. The last thing I'd like to say concerning that issue is that some don't realize that there's a state law that talks directly to the point of a county giving up land in their county. Think about this long and hard because this is going to be a long drawn out process as I've told the people from Parrish Chapel. It's not going to happen overnight and there's going to be a lot of expense involved. Here's what TCA 5-2104 says. All applications for legislation changing county lines shall be accompanied by the following. Number one, an accurate survey and plot, or plat, excuse me, showing the changes asked for and giving courses and distance of the county line as it will be left after such change should be made. When you're talking about an accurate survey and plat, that's going to be an enormous amount of money that's going to be spent. Now, number two, you have to have a resolution approved by two-thirds of the county legislative body of all counties affected by such boundary line changes. That means that this commission and Sevier County Commission, both by two-thirds majority, would have to approve the resolution. So you may want to think on that. I know I have a meeting next Monday with representatives from uh, Parrish Chapel, and we're going to begin the process. But the question in my mind, as I have expressed to them already, is how much time, money, and effort are individual departments going to be able to put into this if county commission is not going to move forward with it? So I present that as just information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Scarlett had a Before question. the mayor leaves the stand, I'd like to tell him something or ask him something right here if you'll please return. Mr. Chairman, while I am sure the mayor has every right to have his opinion, to call this side of the table cat calls when we simply asked that the information that the gentleman was here sharing with the other end of the table to be shared with this, I find extremely offensive because I think all the commissioners up here like for their packets, whatever, to have the same information distributed. I find it ironic that you would want to limit the information in a thing here. And as far as the chamber, once again, you have stated that it's been cut. It was not a cut. Their appropriation was the same amount they had last time. In fact, they were the only nonprofit for the last two years that was allowed to exceed their appropriation that they got. So I wanted to make that clear before you left the state. Sure. In, in response back, I think that uh, the actions that took place last Monday were embarrassing. Anytime you have an individual that's just an observer, didn't come with the material, did not come prepared to give a presentation and everyone calling and hollering out for this piece of information, that piece of information. That's one of the reasons it's hard to bring business in. Uh, it's, a, it's that type of action that makes it extremely difficult. Mr. Turner. Wow, um, I find it extremely difficult to make a decision without information. And we were being given information about <clears throat> the effects on our county roads. And we were asking for a handout, and the handout didn't even have the county line drawn on it. And if, he, if the person that was coming was not coming to help present it, then what was the point of bringing it up? Because we're the decision-making body on this. And why would we even entertain a, an open thought with no information? 
to make such a decision as let's let a neighboring county do what they want to in our county as it has happened in the past so that is my statement to the point of the information being asked for we didn't have and I, I expect that, that we should receive information before we just like this information about Parrots Chapel that I've asked for and this goes to what I wanted to make a statement here about Parrots Chapel I've not made a decision either way we have to have the information and we uh, we have to deliberately go through the process we have to look at the numbers of course and in the end we have to we have to make the decision not any other elected officials this body would vote on that but when I asked for the information mayor I asked the finance director to lead the charge on it I didn't direct any other department to do to uh, especially under your administration to do anything I asked our finance director who we do have the authority to ask to research the information which means he would go to uh, the, uh, the trustees office for example uh, to the assessor's office for example and in his own office to be able to collect that information I, I did not imply I think you asked could you help and I thought that was a good idea but and I'd like to Mr. Chairman ask if we need to do this to clarify what I was asking let's do it now but if there's if there's an objection to our finance director leading this gathering of information we should make that statement tonight and make it clear if, if, if there's an objection to it, because that's what I'm asking. I'm asking the finance director to lead this. So could I, is that something that we openly, could, could I ask the chair to ask the body if there's, if there's an objection to that request? If there's not, then we can move on, um, implying that our finance director is leading this effort to collect the information. Well, I think, um Obviously, we can ask whatever, and we can we can put something on the agenda if we need to make a motion or vote. We can do that with the overturning of the rules to add something to the agenda. Um, if the finance director has access to the information, great. If if the, they report to the mayor, I'm sure that the information is going to have to come through his department. So I think the government needs to work with each other and pull this off. That's not the question I asked you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I you can overturn the rules and you can have it added to the agenda if you want to make a motion. That's not what I asked you either. I asked you, would it be okay to ask this body of commissioners right now if they have any objection? That's what I asked. Okay. In a meeting, it's a voting meeting, and anytime we take action, it has to be voted on. It comes from a motion and a second, and you know that, and then we vote on it. So if this was a work session, sure we could have that discussion at a voting meeting we vote and if you want to add it to the agenda i'm open to that well, all we have to I do just, is move to overturn overturn the rules suspend the rules if that goes through then we'll add it to the agenda and we'll take it up in new business well i'll just i'll just make the motion since this is what we're talking about that the information that i'm requesting is the total amount of taxes that first we have to make a motion to overturn the rules because you're wanting to add something to the agenda. No, I'm not adding anything. I'm just making a motion. How are we? You're not going to vote on the motion? Yes. You can't vote on a motion that's not on the agenda. It has to be part of the agenda. But if you want to overturn the rules, we can. Over, you can. I'm suspend making the rules. a motion pertinent to the information that's being presented. Show me the rule that says that you can't do that. We do this all the time. It's in our rules under voting and under the. I the, not every time. It has to be on the agenda to vote on it. It's, it's, it's ancillary to what we're talking about. That's not to be rude, but that's to say I'm done. Do you have anything to add? Uh, uh, well, Mr. Chairman, regardless of what's going to take place, the information is going to have to come from department heads and report to the mayor's office. The flow of information will have to come from my office, regardless if there's a motion made or there's not a motion made. The other thing I'd like to say, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, the highway superintendent, like I spoke earlier, highway commissioners for Jefferson County looked at this issue. They approved it. Highway superintendent looked at it. He approved it. These are individually elected personnel for this county to represent the county. 
County Commission needs to be supportive of some things. These people did their job. And wait a minute, we've got a couple more questions. And I, I wanted to make a comment because I think the I think the spirit of what Russ is saying is we would like to ask for the your department to work with the finance department, get us the information quickly so we can have information to base the decision. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I've already talked with our finance director, Mr. Potts. And because of the workload of information that's going to have to come through, I suggested that my office gather all that information, present it to him so he could put the numbers on it. So in other words, we're already in discussion of working together to get you the information so that it can be fed back to this body. Okay. Does that work? Is that okay with you, Ms. Fox? I guess. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Music. I'd like to say, I wasn't here last week, so I don't know if you was embarrassed or not, but nothing embarrasses me anymore than seeing you on TV calling us names that we don't know what we're doing or a project like the mega site come up. A few of the commissioners knew. I didn't know my people come and ask me. I don't know anything about it. I don't think you should. And you talk to us like we're kindergarten kids. I'm not a kindergarten kid. I'm not the smartest person sitting here, but I'm not the dumbest either. And as far as the DTR, there wasn't one person probably on this commission that worked any harder than my husband to get that. And we were threatened by people on that road and the factory was going to be across the hill. One lady even stood up and said, I'll never vote for you again. She lost her job two weeks later at Magnavox. I think it's still funny today because she said that. But I don't like you getting on TV and talking about us like we're a bunch of dogs running around out here. And, you know, you need to be as nice to us. I can be nice to anybody, but if somebody's not nice to me, I'm not going to be nice to them. Commissioner, That's just the way I feel. Commissioner Seal? Just got a couple of quick questions for the mayor. These are technical questions about the property where this road is going to be in Morristown. Has Morristown acquired the property for the road and an easement for the road? I, the, the map that the road superintendent gave me shows the extension going across a, what looks like an open field. Has Morristown already acquired that? They already have it. Mr. Tipton can answer that better than I can. highway board on their judgment and mine too but I'm about tired of answering silly questions when it's there you know what I'm saying it's it's beginning to irritate me just on and on and on Commissioner Seals all right two things we're not even voting on this road are we all these people want is our consent to come across the property they have to do this road because it's in Jefferson County. So we, we need a vote and on that? That's all they're doing. They, I don't know of any kind of whatever's anybody's thinking it's going to happen. I don't, I'm having a hard time understanding what some is thinking it's going on. All they want is our consent to come on our property. The the. The expression that was made last week about they're going to do it anyway, they're going to do it, but it won't be coming on our properties. It'll be staying on their property. They're going to have to go across the properties that they don't have like to ready for building sites. What are you like now? What are you, have you got something? No, I'm just saying that's different than what we were informed last week. No, I, I me. said, well, we, we explained we, Me and you had this conversation, but last week at our meeting, it was stated by the mayor that it does not matter they can do it anyway 
and they can do it anyway. Is that but, that? But yes. it cannot go in Jefferson County no, if we do not vote. Exactly. Separate and vote. Well, well, there's no time shift. On the property, stay all right. Still on the so floor. here's the question. I've still got the floor. Right? You do have the floor. Right. And I All think right. the question you asked is important, which is, do we have to vote on this or not? Because I don't see it on here. A vote. I don't see it either. <laughs> so that's why I asked that. I mean, it's not, they've not got it on here that we're voting on this tonight, Trina. No, there's nothing on it. And I was asked to do it in a resolution. It's not even on here. I ask uh, the you, chairman, it was the, I'll you know, be glad to address that. I asked you if you needed a resolution. You said it'd probably be a good idea. One was sent two days later. It was sent to legal. Never did see it again. No information. It was sent to legal. Never seen it again. So the, the response is we do need to vote on this. And we do need to. That's, they're just wanting the county's graces on this. We've done voting on it. We tabled it once, my group did, because they wanted to do a little more research about it and a little more understanding. I needed a little more understanding. To add, it, to, to add it to the agenda, we need to have a suspension of the rules if y'all want to address it tonight. And I'll ask you, Mr. Tipton, uh, timeliness-wise, is this something that can be on the October agenda or is this something that uh, it's required if they're going to give us this million dollars of road improvements that we go ahead and get it approved now? It, it's the sooner they get started, is my understanding. The sooner they get started. We have a motion by Miss Music to suspend the rules, second by Randy Bales. Any discussion on suspending the rules? No, nothing. Any, any objection to suspending the rules? The rules are objection? Yep. Mr. Scarlett objects, so we'll vote on suspending the rules. And I'm just going to ask for a show of hands. If you're in favor of suspending the rules to take this up and vote on it, raise your hand. If you're objecting? No. In favor. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen in favor of suspending the rules. The rules are suspended. And we'll add that to new business. <coughs> Mr. Clark, if you'd add that to new business on the agenda, and we'll, we'll get a vote on it. The floor is Commissioner Seal. The next question is on the Parish Chapel, and I don't, I don't know who to address this to. It's going to be a lot of work for Langdon and the mayor's office to do all this finding, and somebody who's going to pay for the survey? Is the county going to pay for that, or is Parish Chapel Chapel community going to pay for that? So, what is there some way we can take a preliminary vote to see how many people is interested in? doing this because I don't think there's too many on here going to vote to give that land away and I've talked to Terry about this and if we're not interested in doing that why do all this work that's just the point Can I respond yeah, yeah anybody I, I probably misunderstand the whole situation but I think uh, Susan Gass her property assessor I would think could reasonably, with a reasonable amount of effort, give us a, a good estimate on the property taxes. I mean, they assess the property, what is it, every four or five years. Well, yeah, I, uh, I, mean, I think she could give us a good number on that. And the mayor's already stated, I think he said the wheel clients officer, I'm not sure if he reports the sheriff or, but I would think he could give us a reasonable estimate on, on uh, wheel tax income. I just don't see those numbers being hard to get. But as far as your question, of the uh, surveys, the big, I mean, who's going to, how are we going to know what's going? And, you know, I deal with that all the time, and I don't know how you. Well, the way I've loosely defined or been referring to it is the area in question is the area <laughs> currently served by Parish Chapel Community Volunteer Fire Department. So that property. Is there a map of that? Well, it Shell. should be at uh, E911 because they dispatch all calls at E911 dispatches to Parish Chapel. They, they know those addresses of that area, and that's the area we're talking about. Point of order, right. are you going to deal with this other, or are you going to go on Parish Chapel now? No, I just had two questions. <laughs> yeah. put it in the Same thing. We put it in You know, we spend the rules, are we going to do anything with it? Oh, you mean vote? Yeah, you want to go ahead and take up the vote now? <laughs> that's my fault. <laughs> okay. I, I put it under new business, but we, we have to take it up now, but hey. I went on. Hey. 
I, I, it's hard to see through that computer yeah, screen. Done. Are you done? I've done if. if okay, if I've got Commissioner Beeler, Commissioner Huffaker, <laughs> Commissioner Casterson. Mayor, I'd like to ask, and I want to be sure of this before I vote. Is this our, our lots? It's up there. We got very few lots. It's up there, the way I understand. But is this road going to go to hinder one of those lots, or maybe two of them that we get we get rid of? Is this road going to take our property that we got up for uh, potential businesses going in there? Do you know the answer to that? I can't. I, I can't give you that. Hold on. It's on Hamlin County's property they own in Jefferson County. Am I right, Chad? Yeah. Every bit of the road along is what I said. Walk up. Industrial park owned property uh, more than that. So it, just, it does not come across any portion of the county owned property. Okay, good enough. That's all I need. Okay, uh, Commissioner Huffaker. Okay, this is back to Parrish Chapel. Um, Mr. Charles Fleming spoke tonight, he spoke Monday night, and on um, last week, he brought up the idea of paying for services for them from Sevier County. So, in your research of all of this with the finance director and the mayor, could you all please research the idea of paying for certain services from Sevier County? If they remain Jefferson County property tax, but could, is it possible we could pay um, if the EMS from Sevier County is closer for them to go? Um, I don't know if the systems are linked or if we're already doing that, but for schools, is a possibility that we could pay for that area to go to Sevier County? Could we pay Sevier County something? So I'd appreciate it. I don't mean, I don't mean to add <laughs> a lot more because I'm sure that is a lot more. But I'm interested in can we pay for services for them so they get better services, but they still remain in Jefferson County. Mr. Mayor. That, that's a good point, Commissioner. But Jefferson County already has a mutual aid agreement with Sevier County. You know, when they've needed help, like when they had fires, we would go over there. And when we've needed help, they'd come over here. So there's already a, a system in place. Uh, to how extensive it is and what would how detailed it would be as far as coverage I don't have that information for you but it's worth looking into we'll look into that well if you could research that because maybe there's just a lack of communication to the parish chapel area maybe really Sevier County does respond if they're closer maybe I don't know it maybe they don't know it but somebody else knows it so yeah. um, thank you Commissioner Kesterson um, I, I was just going to had a response to, to Pop's question, I would hope that we would get some cost numbers and some savings numbers, that type of information in before we ever spend a dollar to go out and do any type of survey. Just just to get some preliminary information in and then then make a decision. Commissioner Tabor. Real, real briefly, uh, I suppose we're still talking about the, the road. Uh, to me, it, it, it seems so simple. Uh, Marstown's going to build a road in Jefferson County, and they're going to pay for it. How how can that be bad? Right. I mean, I, I don't understand how that could possibly be bad. Commissioner McGraw, I think there's a lot of validity to what Commissioner Seal said. Um, we've asked the mayor's office, finance director, all to do a whole lot of work. There's there's no doubt that this is a whole lot of work, and I know they're willing because they want to serve the county commission to do what's right but if if there's a clear majority of the county commission that's not leaning this way at all then i, I really don't want to disrupt i mean the mayor doesn't have a lot of free time nor does mr tipton or does the finance group. so i i don't know and maybe i have to yield to commissioner gall on this as part of the team but i wish there was some way we as a body could say Absolutely, we want to move forward with this and get all of the information or if this is wasting our county's time. Thank you. That's a fair point. And if you want to, um, again, if you want to add that to the agenda so we can come to a consensus tonight, then by all means, I'm open to a motion to suspend the rules and add that to the agenda. I don't know what kind of motion, Mr. Chair, but I would make other than maybe a preliminary motion to say which way we're leaning would you like to suspend the rules and then add to it in the new business something to um 
a motion to either direct them to look into it or not. And if nobody's interested in doing that, nobody's interested in, in that pursuit, then we just free them up their time. Motion to suspend the rules to consider a vote, preliminary vote. Mr. Vote just asked. Okay. We've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor, right? All those in favor of of what we're doing is we're suspending the rules to add to the agenda a vote. And that vote is, are you interested in the mayor and the finance department and all the department heads working together to come up with this cost benefit analysis with the Parrots Chapel secession? Is that what you're asking? Yes, sir. Okay. And you've got a question about the motion? We've got two motions that we've set into play. Or if we do the second motion that we just talked about, do we not need to vote on the first one to get it out of the way first? We voted on the first one and we added it to new business. So we're gonna we're gonna vote on accepting this road. And now the second motion, if we suspend the rules now, we'll also add that to new business. If you're Mr. Dockery. I thought the mayor already agreed and Mr. Pot said he guessed so to work on this. Is that not true? Well, I'm happy to, and I think Mr. P Mr. Potts and I, well, I can't speak for him, but there's not a problem with us working on this project or any other project. Mr. Turner. Thanks to my fellow commissioner. I was, I wanted to do it. I'm, I'm glad to be late raising my hand to, to second it, but I think it's important that we go ahead and vote um, up or down and see who is in favor of researching this significant request okay so um, so I, I'm in favor of it because I feel it's it's right for the citizens who've, so, made, who've come before us great there's motion on the floor to spin the rules to add this to tonight's agenda if you're in favor raise your right hand one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen the rules are suspended. That's going to be added under new business, and that will be a Parrots Chapel preliminary vote. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Sheriff, do you have anything to report? Yes, I'd like to clear up some comments that were made during the uh, work session about the uh, rodeo that was did on Leadmine Road. When the gentleman said we got. Uh, some calls up for I researched for 911. I didn't get a, a call myself, and my supervisor said he didn't get any calls. But I researched 911. We did get two complaints, as the gentleman said in Whitebine, on the rodeo at Leadmine Road, and the two two complaints were about the noise. And uh, I understand there's going to be one this Saturday. We're addressing it. I've informed the owner of the property, and he's cut out the. Uh, party after the rodeo. Hopefully, they'll eliminate, uh, eliminate the noise. If uh, if it don't, we will enforce the law. Thank you. If you have any, any question with my report, I'll be glad to answer. Them. Thank you, Mr. Sheriff. Next, we have Howard and Superintendent Charles Tipton. Do you have anything? Okay, we're going to take a brief we're recess. Oh, we're not. <laughs> Ms. Tipton. I'd like to ask you all to, to simplify this thing and get it done about Pirates Chapel. Why don't you just take a vote to see who's interested in doing this? That's what we're doing. That's what and you don't. Why don't you just do it? That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. I get so tired of it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, guys, we're going to take a recess. We're going to start at 8 o'clock. Next is Chamber of Commerce President Daryl Hill. Daryl, you have the floor. <laughs> Commission, just a couple of quick things, and I know it's late, so I'll be real fast. I did want to announce, I told you earlier that the, <clears throat> pardon me, the Build a Better Future Steering Committee has met and now has decided, and we have in place the dates and the places of the, of the community meetings that we're going to have. The first meeting will be on October the 17th at Marty Middle School. The next meeting is October the 19th at White Pine School. The third meeting is October the 24th at Rush Strong School. 
and on 1026 at Jeff Middle. Those are four community meetings where we're going to be inviting citizens, elected officials to attend, and we have a facilitator that'll be uh, scheduling the meetings or conducting the meetings, and we're going to really try to redo the strategic plan that was done 10 years ago. We're going to try to kind of celebrate the the ones that the goals that we have obtained and then try to set new ones. So I'll be giving you, uh, sending you an email with all of this information in the next few days. I just got all this done uh, this morning. The other thing is I want to mention to you that Mayor Palmieri and all the city mayors have declared this week as Imagination Library Week. Uh, the state and the Dollywood Foundation <laughs> are celebrating this week that they have now achieved over 30 million books have been given out to kids in Tennessee since they started 30 years ago, or 13 years ago, I'm sorry. And in those 13 years, we were one of the counties that got in real quickly. We have now given out 220,000 books in Jefferson County to our kids. So I think that's amazing. I think it's a great program that that we all have supported and I hope we'll continue to support. So I just wanted to throw out those figures to you. Thank you, Mr. Oh, oh, let's see. Ms. Huffaker. I just had a question. Do you have an event coming up towards the end of the month that you would like to tell us about? Oh, the, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, our sampler event is a week from tomorrow, next Tuesday, out at the Carriage House. Uh, I think some of you have attended it before. Remember, this is to showcase a lot of our restaurants and vendors. Uh, right now, we have 16 or 17 restaurants and vendors that will be there showcasing their goods. And so uh, tickets are $12 in advance, $15 for you to come. We'll have a band playing. Uh, each year, it's been a, a good, fun event for all of us. Been a pretty good little fundraiser for the chamber. And then again, helping those businesses get word about, out about their businesses. Commissioner so, Seal. Who is facilitating the meeting? Uh, Jill Vogelfang. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helton. Uh, okay, next we have uh, Finance Director Langdon Potts, and our rules actually state that we have to deal with um, surplus, those, well, all resolutions by a roll call vote, and we have to deal with them all individually. I know that the uh, Director of Finance has before us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine resolutions. I would entertain a motion to suspend our rules so that we can take all nine of those motions with one roll call vote. Motion to suspend the rules. And a second. Okay, all those in favor, raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. All right. 20. That's everybody. Okay. Uh, rules are suspended. And so are there any questions about resolutions 2017-39 uh, through 2017-45 for the Director of Finance? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Actually, it's through 46, just I'm, to be. I'm sorry. Thank you. And what about, 48. let's see, there's 2007-45. There's two. Are there two that are 2007-45? One of them is a school uh, resolution that is information only, does not require action. So that we get this right, we're, we're dealing with B, C, D, E, F, G, are we also spend, doing H? H is also included. Are we doing J too? No. no, that does not require action. And I? I is a, that's a bond resolution, doesn't it? Okay, great. So B through H. Nice clerk, call the roll. Katie Huffaker? Yes. Todd Kesperson? Yes. Steve Douglas? Yes. David Gall? Yes. Randy Bates? Yes. Randy Music? Yes. Donnie Tabor? Yes. John McGraw? Yes. Russell, C uh, Russell Turner? Yes. Tim Seals? Yes. Robert Blevins? Yes, sir. Gene Esslinger? Yes. Randy Bales? Yes. John Neil Scarlett? Yes. T 
Terry Dockery. Yes. Robert Tucker. Yes. Jimmy Carmichael. Yes. David Seal. Yes. Bob Beeler. Yes. Barbara Sheet. Yes. The ayes have it. Okay. Okay, I'd like to back up to uh, A for just a second. Uh, we need uh, approval, a motion for approval on contract in lieu of performance bond for the landfill. It's a total of these three contracts, $9,130,000. It's up about $2,000 from last year. And it's just like it says, we can do this as a contract with the state as opposed to <coughs> taking out a performance bond. It costs money. Doing this contract does not. Is there a motion? So moved. Commissioner Scarlett, second by Commissioner Bales. Any uh, question, comment? And can we do this with a voice vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Letter I. Okay, the last thing I have is the uh, bond resolution 2017-48 authorizing the issuance of a general obligation refunding bond of Jefferson County in the aggregate principal, principal amount not to exceed $10 million. Mr. Ayers is here with us if we have further questions as well. Do we have a motion by McGraw? Second, Turner. Discussion? Call for the question. Any objection? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Katie Huffey. Yes. Todd Kesterson. Yes. Steve Douglas. Yes. David Gall. Yes. Randy Bates. Yes. Rita Music. Yes. Donnie Tabor. Yes. John McGraw. Yes. Russell Turner. Yes. Tim Seal. Yes. Robert Blevins. Yes. Gene Esslinger. Yes. Randy Bales. Yes. John Neal Scarlett. Yes. Terry Dockery. Yes. Robert Tucker. Yes. Jimmy Carmichael. Yes. David Seal. Yes. Bob Beeler. Yes. Barbara Sheets. Yes. Jay. No, that's all the action I need. Okay, and Jay was just a uh, handout for information. Yes. And K. I don't remember what K was. Another handout. That's okay. financials I went over last last month, unless there's any questions. Any questions for Direct Potts? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next, we have a uh, budget meeting or budget committee, committee chairman John L. Scarlett. All right, first county budget, general fund 101, amendment three. This deals with moving the money back into the hospital and contributions to nonprofits. So move it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions? Call the roll, Mr. Clark. You know what, Mr. Carl, I can't see you. Is, is this something when you call roll on or? Yes. Roll call vote. Katie Huffaker? Yes. Todd Kesterson? Yes. Steve Douglas? Yes. David Gall? Yes. Randy Baxter? Yes. Rita Music? Yes. Donnie Tabor? Yes. John McGraw? Yes. Russell Turner? Yes. Tim Seals? Yes. Robert Blevins? Yes, sir. Gene Esslinger? Yes. Randy Bales? Yes. John Neal Scarlett? Yes. Terry Doctor. Yes. Robert Tucker. Yes. Jimmy Carmichael. Yes. David Seal. Yes. Bob Beeler. Yes. Barbara Sheets. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Scarlett. B. General Fund 101, Amendment 4. We're still on county budget amendments on A. This is a uh, an amendment that moves some money around for the libraries, takes in a couple of uh, insurance settlements for the sheriff, and on the uh, Tobacco fund grant does not require a roll call vote. So move it, Mr. Chairman. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Hospital fund 128, amendment number two. This is the other side of the first new pass. It comes out of our fund balance back into the hospital fund balance. $316,426. So move it, Mr. Chairman. Requires a roll call vote. Any discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Katie Huffaker? Yes. Todd Kesterson? Yes. Steve Douglas? Yes. David Gall? Yes. Randy Bates? Yes. Rita Music? Yes. Donnie Taylor? Yes. John McGraw? Yes. Russell Turner? Yes. Tim Seals? Yes. 
Robert Blevins. Yes. Gene Esslinger. Yes. Randy Bales. Yes. John Neal Scarlett. Yes. Terry Doctor. Yes. Robert Tucker. Yes. Jimmy Carmichael. Yes. David Seal. Yes. Bob Beeler. Yes. Barbara Sheets. Yes. <coughs> Ms. Scarlett. On B, school budget, general purpose school budget fund 141, budget amendment number two. Moving around grant money. A little bit on regular instruction for computers. So moved, Mr. Chairman, does not require a roll call vote. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Mr. Scarlett? General Purpose School Fund 141, Budget Amendment Number 3, State Education Funds, Regular Instruction, Maintenance of Plant. Does not require a roll call vote. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. Federal Purpose 142, Budget Amendment Number 2. This mainly deals with grants. There's quite a bit uh, coming in on that. It is additions to grants that we agreed to and told the school system, Mr. Lang, that we would adjust it when they got the grant so we could go ahead and proceed with our budget because it's federal money and there's not a lot we can do about it one way or the other. Uh, so moved, Mr. Chairman, does not require a roll call vote. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> it carries. Mr. Scarlett? Federal Purpose 142, Budget Amendment Number 3. Vocational grants, regular instruction grants, same way as the last one. So moved, Mr. Chairman, does not require a roll call vote. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. Food service fund 143, budget amendment number one, insurance recovery, does not require a roll call vote. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. I'm going to skip the next one because it's going. It'll probably have some discussion. But D is the ADA compliance. The budget committee thought that it would be prudent since we had some money with this coming up. And I guess Mr. Longmire and still this committee have met on this several times. Is that right, Mr. Longmire? Yeah. It is a it is a issue. We don't know how pressing, but we know it's an issue. And the committee's recommendation is that we set aside in a reserve $500,000 for ADA compliance based on what we've got. To, we don't know yet what we're going to have to do. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Any discussion? <clears throat> McGraw. Uh, I guess parliamentarian need to help on this. Let's say all of a sudden we don't need this half million. Let's say we approve this and we don't need the half million for ADA compliance. How are, are we able to get that out for other purposes in the county? And I would suggest that to uh, Director of Finance. Uh, if you're asking how many votes it takes to get it back out, I don't know. Are you asking for a recension vote? No, I'm just asking for clarity. In other words, if we put the half million in, and then we don't need but 300000 for ADA. How do we get the 200000 to use for other means other than ADA? We'd have to go back to the simple majority. Or, I, mean, I don't know the parliamentary part of it. Parliamentary wise, it would be a simple majority. Simple. It's a simple majority vote. Yes. However, how you put it in, you'd get it. You'd have to You're up. vote it the same way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. He asked you. Just, I, I hate to put 500000 in and then not be able to get it back if we don't need it. You understand what I'm saying? Well, I think we the way that I understand it is we can get it back. We've done that before with a simple vote, simple majority simple vote. Simple majority? That's yeah. correct. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mr. Scarlett? Oh, Mr. Question Turner. To that. Where, which money from what pot of money are we here, Mark? I might have missed that. Fund balance, we have $2.1 above minimum. And rather than <coughs> not address some of these issues, the budget committee felt like it was prudent. Mr. Longmire, you maybe have, if you want to ask Mr. Longmire 
he's been meeting with the facilities committee. He's met several times with them, I think. But there is a, we have this and a landfill closed, post closure <coughs> reserve coming up, but both of them are issues that are down the road. We don't know how much we've got, but while we've got some money, we want to address, or at least start addressing for a reserve. So, Commissioner Scarlett, would you please again, just uh, for clarity on D, state the motion and we'll vote. The motion is that the Budget Committee recommends that we place in a reserve, have Mr. Langdon place in a reserve, $500,000 for ADA compliance for our buildings until we figure out how much it's going to cost. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. One opposed. Was that Commissioner Seal? It was. Okay. All right. Mr. Scarlett? E, landfill post, post closure. You just recently, just a minute ago, when Mr. Lang was up there, you voted on several million dollars of a bond that we have to carry uh, to show good faith. We have this cost coming up. It has been in state audits consistently. We know that it's going to cost some. We don't know how much. I think that they're they're working on repermitting several other things, and it may reduce that amount. But if we do not get started at some point, we will not have the money. Budget committee recommends that we take five hundred thousand out of that two point one and place it same way in a reserve. It is not to be transferred to the landfill fund. It is to remain in the county fund balance, but at a, help me Mr. Lang, a reserved or a, uh, one word of, yeah, it uh, it'd, be a, it'd be called a committed. Committed. Committed so, balance, just like the one you did before. Yeah. But it will not be transferred to the landfill fund. This will remain in the county funds. Same way as the last one. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Discussion, McGraw. Just, just for clarification, the audit committee has been working with this significantly. As vice chairman of the audit committee, we have uh, brought uh, Commissioner Galt before us as the head of sanitation and landfills because he's the, certainly an expert in this. And as we understand it, this thing is a moving target. Uh, we, the state. And David can probably explain it a lot better than me, but this is a moving target. We and we need this money set aside because this could potentially cost us a whole lot more than a half million. So I think this is a, a financial responsibility that we have to, to do this. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Tabor. Uh, Mr. Scar, I just got one question. If uh, is this is this so emergent? immediate need that we can't address it as the needs arise do we need to <coughs> do we need to put this in now and just why can't we address it as needs arise i guess that's my question because we've got uh help me mr lang what's the total figure we've got that they're saying now but we don't know that it's going to be that much we know it's going to be some currently our uh, we have an audit i'm sorry we have a finding each year with our audit on this issue we're about 3.8 million dollars short on that and that's one of the reasons we have these two findings every single year and just so you know i called the auditor and asked what they thought about it and they thought that was showing great faith toward helping resolve this they know we're working on the permit and the other thing but they thought this would we would get credit for this during during our audit okay if Thank we you. did that mr Beeler? on the landfill uh we get keep getting written up about it now, what, we're, what I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe you can answer it, maybe you can't. But since we're not putting it in the landfill's control, we're living it in the fund balance. Will he keep writing us up or will he, under, will he give us credit for that? Uh, we, we will, I, I explained to him that we're not gonna move it over there because once it gets over there, it's there. And uh, he said uh, that he thought this was, this was let me back up. So once we have these findings starting last year, the mayor and I have to sign an action plan of what we're going to do to fix any kind of audit finding that we have. 
And so this will this will go in there to kind of ease that finding. It'll still be a finding because we're 3.8 million in the hole right now on that side. But it's it's going to show, and we have our action plan that we're doing something to work toward that. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. One opposed. And was that Scarlett? Yeah. Seal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Seal. All right, Ms. Scarlett. All right. Uh, the next thing is bonuses for the county employee, and this is kind of a two part deal that we had. And first, let me say this brought to my attention that we've got somebody out stirring the county employees up. And I want to say to them, I want say to Chrissy and Steve both, the budget committee, you all can publish it in the paper, the budget committee did not in any way say that we want to take the insurance away from the county employees. That is a barefaced lie. And the person spreading that rumor, the only way they could be any bigger liars is if they weighed more. But they all we wanted to do was enter into the discussion of what do we, how do we go forward? We've had a 38% rise over the last eight years in insurance cost for the county employee. We've absorbed that. Do we bid it out? Do we raise deductible? We're not having any discussion that anybody in any company in the United States has not had in the last little while about health care. We're just having a discussion about it. We're not wanting to take anybody's insurance. We're not advocating to take anybody's insurance. And like I say, whoever's spreading that is a liar. Is that is this bonus for the county employees? This was a bonus for the county employees, but this was part of the motion. In making the motion, what we said was, when we make this motion, we understand that the count we've had a, a pretty good fund balance roll. We want to share it with the county employees, but in doing this, we need they everybody needs to know we're, it's just kind of like the fire departments. This is a get your house in order money. We need to start having input and discussions about insurance when we do this. We're not doing this in a vacuum. We want to start with this, but we want everybody to recognize we might not be able to do this forever. So what we did was we asked that it be brought to the commission and recommended that we give a 2% employee bonus to the county employees. Any discussion? McGraw. I have always felt that we have too much government and too high taxes. I guess that's why I'm a Republican because that's supposedly the party that has uh, run on lower government and lower taxes. We have, over the past three years, accomplished something very important, and that is we have raised taxes, Mr. Chairman. We have not raised them, except on the wheel tax. If we have that much surplus, $274,000, it would seem that the rest of the county who are on Social Security, on um, military retirement, who punch the time clock at the factory down there, and things like that, they got their 1.4% if they were fortunate enough this year to get that as a raise because that's cost of living. And Mr. Chairman, you made the motion and I made the second budget committee that we give our county employees 1.4%. We don't want to withhold that because that keeps them even. We have 800 employees in North Oak, Tennessee. We did not give more than a cost of living raise this year. There were a few individuals that were so outstanding in there that we gave them a little incentive bonus because they had gone and become certified and things like that. I don't think it's fair for the taxpayers of Jefferson County who did not get more than a cost of living raise for us to take their money, and it is their money, they're the taxpayers, and to take it and distribute it as bonuses when they didn't get bonus. So 
This was a split vote in the budget committee, and I live with the county commission, but my opinion is the cost of living raise is legitimate, but to give bonus money when the majority, the vast majority of our citizens did not get more than a cost of living raise is fiduciarily irresponsible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grom. Mr. Dockery. I, the feedback I get most often from a lot of people I know regarding county employee pay, benefits, etc., is be fair. And, and me personally, the only way I know to be fair to the employee and to the taxpayers is really by market survey. So, you know, we can we can we can look at numbers as far as local and national inflation, but market is really what drives wages and salaries in a region or in an area. So I'll touch on a couple things with this comment. Number one, if 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 uh, we had an HR manager, then I would think or recommend that about every three to five years we do a market survey. There are people who do that professionally. Mercer Group is one, for example. But about every at least five years, we would see what the market pays in this region, and we would know. And if we stay within, the, say, the 75th percentile of that, then we can attract the better employees, and we know we're competitive, and we're paying, paying fair market price, which is fair to the employee and is fair to the taxpayers. Uh, so I can't sit here and say that we're where we need to be just flat out on, on their hourly wages. Um, as far as insurance costs uh, and, and the comments from the budget chairman and, and the comments made in budget committee, benefits, salary, wages is all part of a total compensation package. Some people may be heavier on the hourly rate and less on the benefits. But when you do these kind of market surveys, it takes into consideration the whole compensation package. So in lieu of not really knowing where we stand in the market and whether or not we're giving department heads the ability to attract the right kind of people and the best kind of people for the county employees, school system, and everyone, and, and not knowing where we're at in the market, I mean, I'm, I'm more willing to support this small amount of money given the money we have available. And my, my side comment or last comment somewhat germane to the subject is I know mayors talked about HR position in the past. Uh, being only one member of the budget committee presented with a job description and their their duties, responsibilities, and potential value to the county, I'd be more than willing to entertain that subject. Ms. Music. I'd like, I agree with John. I'm a retired state employee. I got a wonderful and my insurance went up. I have to, I, I didn't even get a raise because my insurance went up more than my raise was. So. Any other discussion? Mr. Total, Turner? Total cost, I'd like to know. I, I might have missed it. What the, $275,000. This is a roll call vote. Before you vote, this does <coughs> that number does include D nine one one. Is that correct, Mr. Yes. Lake? Okay. And this should be a roll call vote. Fix fund balance. Yes, sir. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Katie Huffaker. Yes. Todd Casterson. Yes. Steve Douglas. Yes. <coughs> no vote. Tim Stein. Randy Baxley? Yes. Rita Music? Stay. Donnie Tabor? Yes. John McGraw? No. Russell Turner? Yes. Tim Seals? Abstain. Robert Levins? Gene Esslinger? Yes. Randy Bales? Yes. John Neil Scarlett? Yes. Terry Dockery? Yes. Robert Tucker? Yes. Jimmy Carmichael? Yes. David Seal? No. Bob Beeler? No. Barbara Sheets? No. Twelve four eyes have it. Anything else, uh, Chairman Scott? Yes. No, sir. That concludes. All right, Conservation Board, uh, we, we had a meeting tonight, great update. Uh, engineer came in, 
working on that uh, park. We have all the land transferred over from Safe Space. Those deeds are recorded, and we appreciate Safe Space working with us like that. Um, we had the the total property now valued, and just a preliminary estimation was around one hundred seventy-six thousand dollars. So we can use that as part of our in-kind match. We're also working with. Oh, I wanted to give a thanks to Brad Phillips and also the Rescue Squad because we had a we had an issue with parking lots, and I believe working inside their parking lots are gonna they're gonna help us with that, help us solve that problem. So that's gonna be quite a savings. And then the town of Dandridge is currently talking to us about uh, possibly partnering as far as a dog park. We're going to have a dog park there, and they're looking at some grants there. So that could also help with our in-kind match. So all that's going on really positively. Um, we're working with the mayor uh, to get in touch with ETED on beginning the grant proposal, and the engineers are working up the cost estimation. Uh, for the different amounts that may, we may qualify for. We're going to meet again next month, and I'll have another report for you then. Next, Facilities Committee, Commissioner Jimmy Carmichael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We met this morning at 10 a.m., and uh, everybody was there but Dr. Edmonds. I believe he's a little under the weather. So Michael Fagan was there in his place, and uh, first item on the agenda was uh, Mr. David Longmire gave us the rundown on the uh, engineering firm we, we, we put out with Langdon to uh, find an engineering firm that was qualified to do ADA compliant engineering and we had I think uh, three three different firms answered but only one in a timely fashion the other two were late and Kimley Horn out of Nashville is who was chosen by the committee to uh, to look into Jefferson County's ADA compliance. And there was no money discussed. They're going to look at the buildings, then they're going to tell us a price. So you'll be waiting for that. The second thing on the agenda was the uh, Michael Fagan gave us a report on the Building 8 collapse that was due, Mr. Scarlett. I believe you've got a copy of it down there. That was passed out in the packet earlier. And uh, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It discusses that the six inch water drains had been gun barreled down to two inches. And, you know, pretty much three roofs on the building had a lot of weight on it to start with. And that's pretty much a rundown of, of what happened. And he gave us an analysis study that the school board is looking at to uh, come up with the, uh, more or less the funding plan for the future of the future upgrades and capital investment. And it's quite a lengthy little survey. It'll be coming back up with some real numbers. We, we, had, we had a lot of numbers that were mixed up in his survey of the school projects and stuff, but it had, a, it had a good list and that's what the school board was looking at. But in the future, we should have a copy that we can pass out for the full committee. There's a question or comment, I'll be glad to answer. Mr. Scott. Did they say why they changed the drains? I'm sorry. Did they say why they changed the drains? No, they did not. But they, he did interject that Travers Insurance was going to uh, try to sue the previous contractor, but it was quite a few years ago, and they're not sure about who it is. But there was no thought into why things got changed. Thank you, Mr. Carmichael. Now the uh, Commissioner McGraw with Finance Committee update. Just a point of information for the entire commission. We took a matter under advisement tonight and we will be voting on it next month before the voting meeting on the 16th of October. Uh, apparently there was a lot of different parcels of land and Mr. Longmire can correct me if I'm wrong here, David, please do. Um, a lot of parcels of land that were taken because of taxes. They were put out for bid. The vast majority of them were purchased legally uh, so that we could get money for the taxes. There were nine pieces of property that were, were not bid at least the minimum, which means the amount of taxes that were due on it. One, for instance, is two feet by two feet. It's a pet place of cemetery of rest. But anyway. These nine pieces of property are obviously not very valuable because they never were even bid up to the tax level. 
we have to, as a finance committee, not a county commission, under the advisement, of course, not only Mr. Longmire, but Larry Churchwell, who, as our county attorney, came and advised us tonight, we have got to consider putting those out for bid again so that we can try to recoup as a county some money from them because they're doing us zero good right now or anyone else. That's going to be voted on next month's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McGraw. Next, you have items of information on three and four. Mr. Doctor, do you need to speak there? Yes, sir. Mr. Doctor, you have the floor. Uh, in regard to EMS, uh, Parrots Chapel, you, you everyone should have in your packet what is an email from uh, between Brad Phillips, director of EMS, and myself, Miss Peggy, forward it to everyone. It looked like on August 31st, and you have a hard copy in your in your packet. And this is Mr. Phillips' response. I'd asked at a previous meeting for him to give us some information on ambulance response time the parish chapel versus the rest of the county and the thing i'd like to call i mean i i'm not going to read that the, the whole thing you can but the thing i'd like to call your attention to is is mr Phillips states the average response time for emergencies countywide is eight minutes granted there could be times in any area where the response time could exceed eight minutes depending on unit availability the average response time to the Parrots Chapel area from Station 4 in Chestnut Hill is 15 to 17 minutes. Granted, that could change, that could vary too, depending on the location of the area, just as it could vary in the county. But in general, countywide, ambulance response time is 8 minutes, Parrots Chapel is 15 to 17 minutes if the station is in, amb or the ambulance is at Station 4 in Chestnut Hill. Now, speaking of Ch the station for Chestnut Hill, and I'm not sure if Brad's still here, but if he is and I'm wrong, he can correct me, but for those who may not be familiar, there's four ambulance stations in Jefferson County. You got station one, which is the station next to the hospital. I'm not sure actually if that's in Newmarket or Jefferson City, but that station has three ambulances. Station two is right here in Danridge. It has two ambulances. Station three is in White Pine, it has one. Station four is in Chestnut and it has one. So at most times, there are seven ambulances available in Jefferson County. As those ambulances go in service or, or are, are responding or on a call and become unavailable, as, they, as that happens, and we have left fewer and fewer am ambulances available, they start pulling ambulances toward the center of the county. So if you get into a situation where six out of seven ambulances are busy or in service, there's only one available to answer calls, that ambulance will be en route or will be located at Jefferson County High School, which is considered to be the center of the county, so they can head in any direction. The first ambulance that is pulled when three go into service, the ambulance at station four in Chestnut Hill is the first ambulance pulled to move back towards to Danridge to be near the center of the county. Uh, Brad could give you a better estimate than I, but I would dare to say 50% of the time that ambulance is in Danridge, not in Chestnut Hill. The second ambulance to be pulled, by the way, is from White Pine to come to Danridge. So your average response time Paris Chapel is 15 to 17 minutes, according to Brad, if that ambulance is in station. If not, it's and it comes from Danridge, it's 25 to 30 minutes. So I hope and pray no one in here would, would um, dispute the value of how important it is in response time. If you're talking about eight minutes average to the county and 15 to 30 minutes to Parish Chapel, I would contend lives can be lost in that amount of time getting an ambulance there. So the next thing I call your attention to is Mr. Phillips states, the only way to shorten the response time to the Parish Chapel area would be to add a station with staff and an ambulance, which could cost in excess of a half a million dollars per year. So at a high level, uh, and this goes back to a lot of discussion we've had for two meetings. If we are to give, uh, if we have the opportunity to let this area go to Sevier County or keep it in Jefferson County, if we choose to keep this area as part of Jefferson County, then I sincerely hope and pray we give them the same eight minute response time 
and invest a half a million dollars a year into a station at that area. So if you're tracking these numbers we've talked about and you take a million dollars in, in property tax and wheel tax as the number, then I contend right now we need a half a million dollars investment in that area to be fair to them the same as everybody else. So take that number, that those numbers at high level. If you assume we do release them to go to Sevier County, and we can make that happen. The mayor's right. There's some state hurdles, uh, but we've talked to state representatives. Matt has, others have, and we believe we can get some assistance if this body agrees to it. But two school buses, if they go to Sevier County, uh, I don't know what that's worth. That's worth some money. 26 kids currently enrolled. Uh, that's one teacher's position. Just thinking things off the top, probably $75,000 a year. So as we we'll we'll get an idea uh, later tonight on on the, maybe the interest in this, but I myself and with the help of others will put some numbers together too. At everybody's asking for. Thank you, Mr. Doctor. Ms. Tabor. It also says in that email though, Terry, that that, that our director of EMS wouldn't recommend doing that. He said he said it, it, because the population there represents less than 0.05 of percent of our total call volume so uh you know it also that piece is an email as well mr kesterson can i respond to that um, let's get okay. mr kesterson um did did you ask him for any information that would be on the opposite end of the county towards the knox county line getting down in the area where frank nicely and those folks live what the response time is there I think you've got to look at everything as a whole because there's other outer boundaries of Jefferson County that would probably have similar response times. Is Brad still here? We, we, I certainly don't mind asking for that. Off the top, I would suggest if there's three ambulances in Jefferson City and they're traveling 11 e to that end of the county, that's not nothing compared to going from Danders to Paris Chapel. Mr. McGraw? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, it seems like we could just reallocate the ambulances so the Chestnut Hills is not the one pulled first because, again, that's that's our problem. Now, let, let, I am sort of an expert on the golden hour, having had three combat deployments and knowing how far that our U.S. military puts their helicopters where they can get to our battle zones. It is a golden hour. But Brad Phillips has been very, very adamant to stand at that podium and say that they will take people to the nearest hospital. Lacant is not that far from Parents Chapel. So it would be my opinion that if they deem, and we've got great EMS people, if they deem that there is a possibility of loss of life or limb, they are going to take it to the nearest facility whether they're at White Pine and it's Morristown Hamblin or whether it's at Parrish Chapel and it's Lacott. And Lacott is certainly capable of handling emergency stroke, heart attack, uh, major bleeds and things like that. So let's say the worst case scenario were 25 to 30 minutes by ambulance and another 15 or so down to Lacott, <coughs> we're still within that golden hour. So there are a lot of counties in this nation that do not have this kind of access. And so I think I think it's a little bit overstating the case, Mr. Chairman, about the goal. Thank you. Mr. Docker, did you have a comment for? Well, just to, to reply, or hopefully up answer some questions, in regard to the number of calls, um, given the history, and I've been with Chest Hill Volunteer Fire Department for over 25 years, and they run a first responder unit, and I personally have been on calls and, and waited till Amos got there. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of that. Maybe it's why I'm more passionate about it. But I would contend, and, and if need be, we can get people to tell you. But there are probably a lot of people in Paris Chapel, and I know some people in Chestnut Hill, who in the past, given the response time for the Amos to get to them, they'd better take their chances getting their neighbor to put them in the car and drive them to Sevierville rather than wait on an ambulance. So if the service is, if the appropriate service is provided, it's like the ballpark, build it and they'll come, provide the service, and you might see more use out of it. Thank you, Mr. Dockery. Uh, now, believe it or not, at 8.45, we're moving into what we're here to do, which is the new business. 
So we may uh, we may try to work with this agenda next month in the work session to get that streamlined down to where we hit this new business, the part we're actually voting on a lot sooner. Um, Commissioner Seal, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Galt caught one of my mistakes at the work session, and I have corrected it on the broadband resolution 201744. This resolution speaks to the screaming need for broadband in our rural communities. Uh, about 34% of our students do not have broadband or even access to affordable internet, and we're asking the General Assembly to do some basic things to change that. And I'll read the basic changes other than that. Uh, I'll waive any closing. I've already discussed this at the work session. We're asking them to enable electrical power utilities, both you both municipal, public, cooperative, and others to provide, broad, provide broadband services both inside and outside their historic service areas. The key word there is outside their historic service areas. That will increase competition and increase availability. It will change the market of broadband statewide. Uh, there are seven distributors who can provide broadband to the entire state at a competitive price and at lightning speed. Item B, we're asking the state to define broadband service as 25 megabits download speed, 3 megabits upload speed, or by the de de definition provided by the FCC, whichever is greater. And C, permit all electrical utilities the option of providing broadband services on their own or by joint venture with other electrical utilities or with a contracted third party or nonprofit. And then the last thing, finally, is that we're basically endorsing or giving deference to a bill that has already been introduced that will correct these problems, which is Senate Bill 1045 by Janice Bowling and House Bill 10, or sorry, House Bill 1410 by Terry Weaver. Mr. Chairman, I move it for consideration. Second. Second by McGraw. Discussion. McGraw. This is the most important thing we'll do tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I commend Commissioner Seal. He has not only led our commission here, but he has been a leader at the state level in trying to bring this attention to our elected officials. This is extremely important financially for our county and all the other rural counties and all the counties of our state. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next is the the road. And it's uh, the, the road, for lack of a better term, it's what we just added to the agenda. The road that Morristown wanted to spend approximately a million dollars on to improve uh, Jefferson County Road. And we need a we need a motion. Motion to approve. Well, I've got one by Baxley, but I'll give you a second, second. Commissioner Seal. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next, Parrott's Chapel. So currently, that community wants to uh, secede. We're talking about doing some cost studies. Those cost studies are going to require some time for the mayor finance to uh, department and other departments and I know those kind of departments are saying they're happy to do them I know mr. Dockery said he's got uh, his time to put into it and some other people's time to put into it to try to come up with some numbers and so what we're doing now is a preliminary vote to see are we are we as a commission willing to uh, move forward with gathering this information or is this something that regardless of the information that comes back we're not interested in giving up Par Parrot's Chapel, in which case uh, we don't take the time or a resource to investigate. So I'll entertain a motion to, to see that preliminary vote. Move to approve. Okay, move to approve, and we got a second by Tabor. Motion by Seals. Any discussion? Commissioner Seal. Could anyone tell me how much it's going to cost and how much time we're going to have to spend to figure this out? My point is, I think the burden of cost should be in part 
on the people that want to secede from this county. Uh, I'm not opposed to Parrish Chapel leaving this county. I want everybody to know that. Not necessarily. I want to know what it's going to cost, correct? what we're going to have to do, and I want the people that are interested in leaving this county to bear, bear part of that burden with us. Uh, I'm not prepared to vote on the motion that's on the floor because it's every, there's too many unknowns. Uh, if, if it comes to a vote, I will abstain, but I, am, but I want the people of Parrish Chapel to hear this. I am not necessarily against them leaving the county. I just want to know how it affects this county. And I'm not sure the vote would solve that problem, to be honest with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Turner. I'd uh, like to respond to that. The very reason why I would vote, that I will vote to proceed with in the, the investigation of the cost of uh, benefit analysis of this is because we don't know how much it will cost. We don't know if it's minimal, if it's too much to do. And beyond that, uh, that's not that's just to get us started. Um, what is the end result in response to what the uh, citizens are asking of us for a diligent process? I don't think we need to shoot this down without having valid information, uh, good quality information in front of us. We don't have to. Sp this does not have to be a multi-million dollar collection of data. I mean, I, I believe Mr. Dockery stated it very well. Most of this information, let's just look at the tax rolls. Let's look at the wheel tax information. Let's look at how the property is assessed. Then you look at what we spend. How much does the ambulance uh, EMS, EMA spend each year covering that area and so forth, roads. And then just take a, a clear look at it. I don't think it's that that involved. I don't think it's going to cost that much. I, I, that's why I support moving forward with this for the citizens' benefit. McGraw. I, and I, in, in voting to suspend the rules, I, I wanted to discuss it just a touch more simply because I know how busy Mr. Potts is. I know how busy Mr. Ketchum is. All the other people who have to be here. If there are 11 commissioners that feel exactly like Commissioner Beeler, and how he's articulated his position tonight that we have asked our uh, hard-working officials to go through and do a whole lot when it would be meaningless. So the whole purpose of my bringing this up is, is there any way that you would vote to allow these people? If there is, then probably we need all of the, the as Commissioner said, we need all the facts out on the table and whatnot. It's going to be hard for me to vote that simply because of what the mayor said tonight and all the rigmarole that we've got to go through. So I'm just, I'm just interested in a vote to see if, if we as a commission and the majority think there's any way that we'll be convinced that we let this particular area go. Mr. Carmichael. I ain't got to do this in a long time. So, you know, my opinion of what we're fixing to start is we're fixing to go on a journey that you may wish you never went on. Because you're going to be looking at something that there's other parts of this county that could be construed to be the same thing. That's where you're at. And I mean, we got to look at the problem realistically and say, hey, is anybody made live there? I mean, I feel for y'all. I understand. I understand where you're at. I've done work up there. I know. I'm in the excavation business. That's what I do. I've been there. Seen the roads, been all over it. But you know, you gotta stop and ask yourself another question. Why did I choose to live there? You know, I live beside one of the prettiest mountains, Bay's Mountain Range in Talbot. Do I live on top of that mountain? No. I don't live there. I live at the foot of it because I ain't gonna get killed driving up and down my driveway. It's just me. That's my personality conflict. I like things easy. But you know, when you choose to live in a secluded place, you're going to deal with seclusion. That's what you're going to do. And when you choose to live on the lake, you're going to live on a curvy road. No matter what you do, what county you live in, you're still going to deal with the same thing. And you know, we heard people talk about the elders in the community saying, hey, I'm getting old, I might need an ambulance. Well, do you need an ambulance more today than you did 20 years ago? You know, 
as a county, we got to look at this, that if we decide that we're going to let part of the county succeed and go to Sevier County, okay, fine and dandy. But here's your problem with that. What are you going to do down on 2570 when somebody lives at a trailer park? One side of it's in Sevier and Knox County and the other side's in Jefferson County. Are you going to do the same thing again? So you're going to set a precedence. This is groundbreaking right here. This is, a draft. This is something that will be talked about by a lot of counties in the state of Tennessee. I researched it, I looked into it, and I agree with the mayor and Mr. Langdon and everybody, this is going to be a process that ain't going to take 30 minutes. I look for it to take a year or two before you can actually get there. So I'm not so sure that a referendum don't have to be held and you have to vote to do it. It's going to take attorney time. I see a lot of expense. That's just my opinion. Commissioner Gall. I think the numbers that we're asking for are going to be so hard to ascertain as well on the expense side. Um, in this email, we saw there's 50 calls in a year's time out to the out to that area with the ambulance. So, I mean, how do you determine what 50 calls are worth? You know, they're, they're probably going to come to me as the solid waste director and ask me how much of their trash do we throw away? How am I supposed to know? Um, I mean, and, and the 500,000 that Mr. Doctor was talking about, that's one aspect of, of services that we provide. That's ambulance. I mean, we've got to look at roads. If we're going to keep it and, and get it up to standard, you got to look at roads. I mean, 911, Sheriff's Department, all that stuff. There's, there's going to be, I mean, we're asking them to pull a number out of the air is basically what we're doing on the expense side. I just, I just don't see how you can pinpoint expenses. Because when you're looking at EMS, you're looking at Sheriff, I see there's several heads nodding or shaking saying that, that they don't agree with that. But if you look at the Sheriff's Department, okay, he's, he's, got, car, he's got cars that are gonna go out there. So you can, you can look at that mileage and you can look at that hourly wage, but there's support staff to that car. Same thing with the ambulance. You've got support staff. How much of Brad's secretary's time is devoted to Parish Chapel? You can't pull that number out. And then even if you do pull that number out, and, and we do allow Parish Chapel to succeed, are you going to take away that percentage of Brad's secretary's time? You can. I mean, her secretary, his secretary is still needed to perform the task at hand for the rest of the county. So even though we're asking them for that number, I don't know how beneficial that expense side number is going to be. Any other discussion? So the motion is, if you're in favor of going through the investigation process through the mayor and the um, director of finance and the different department heads, to come up with a cost-benefit analysis because you're you're in favor of further investigating the secession of Parrot's Chapel. So if you say I, you're in favor of moving forward in that process. All those in favor say I. I. Opposed? Say no. nay. 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 Quest of votes. Okay, I'll, I'll give a division. Uh, Abstention. Okay, so all those in favor of pursuing this investigation, raise your right hand. Opposed, raise your right hand. Abstain, raise your hand. One, two, three, nine, two. The nays have it. It was three in favor, 11 against. Um, Turner, Tucker, and Doctor were in favor. 11 were against and two abstained. Okay, so that, that's done. So Mr. Mayor and Mr. Director of Finance, don't burden yourself with that. With no other business before the body, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Your announcements. Uh, at the very end, our meeting next Monday, our joint work session.
It's not in there, but it should have been. Okay, read the announcements. Or is it on here? No, it's not. That's why I'm making the point that oh. it's next Monday here, the joint work session on economic development. Here, 630, the uh, uh, Industrial Development Board will lead the charge and Steve's back there. If there's a question of him of how to proceed, I think now would be the time to ask him the question. But he, they will facilitate that meeting here, 6.30, next Monday. Okay, next Monday there's a meeting here at 6.30, joint session. Um, if you have any questions, see Steve after this meeting. Motion to adjourn. Motion. 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 Motion.